Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, as you can see, my Pat McGrath and Bridgerton collection items finally came in the mail. So if you want to see my thoughts, all of that, then just keep watching. So Pat McGrath collaborated with a show, which was Bridgerton, which was this huge sensation. Just for context, I do really, really love the Bridgerton show. I was super duper excited about this. You could actually see my first thoughts when it launched. I did kind of like a first impressions video of just the launch itself, not actually with the products. And you can hear my thoughts on all of that. And obviously I've had a lot of time to reflect on those initial thoughts because shipping took a while. I really think, Pat McGrath kind of bites off more than she can chew when it comes to her launches because she has these intense sales that of course we're buying a lot for and then she came out with a launch that obviously was going to be a success given the following that Bridgerton has and what Pat McGrath has as well the combination of the two so shipping took a long time but I mean preaching to the choir here uh it's been that way for a while so I wasn't <laughs> was not surprised but everything came in one piece and that really is what matters the most. I'm pumped though. I really, really am. So I ordered everything in the collection. It was the Pat McGrath Labs X Bridgerton Total, which was a total of $214, everything together. There is a slight discount for buying them all in one order. She has a couple other bundle deals that you can look at on the website as well. So currently everything in this collection is completely sold out. However, I will put the link down below for the wait list. So it seems that there might be a restock because they're acknowledging that this sold out and they are offering a wait list. So if you are interested in this, put your name on the wait list and you'll receive an email when and if it does come back into stock. So I am going to be talking about the Diamond of the First Water Eyeshadow Palette, the Divine Blush and Glow Trio in Love at First Blush, and then I also have the new Sublime Skin Highlighters, which, oh my gosh, let's get into it. So we'll start off with the main attraction here, which is going to be the eyeshadow palette. I actually really have some thoughts about this, so this might be interesting. So here is what the outer box of the packaging is going to look like. Very Bridgerton-esque. As a fan of the show, I'm really excited about this packaging. I think it screams that Regency fancy era, and it's a perfect meeting of both the Pat McGrath and Bridgerton aesthetic. So conceptually, I think they did a fabulous job. Details of the palette, and this is extremely exciting. The palette is made in Italy. I believe this is the first six fan palette that is made in Italy, and that is a really big deal if you're not a Pat McGrath Labs fan because her Italian formula, chef's kiss. I mean, her other palettes that aren't made in Italy are still fantastic, but the Italian formula is special. It really, really is. Now, this also has an 18-month shelf life, and I want you to take a look. The outer packaging of the component itself does line up with the outer box, except right here in the back, you can see the name of the shades and any other detail that you might want to take a look of absolutely beautiful. I love it. It just isn't open to close, so we don't have the windy thing or anything on the box, but she hasn't been doing that for a while. I really like this though. Again, I just think it's so fun and beautiful. Now something to note, and you'll see this when you open it up. First up, there is a mirror if you need that. It says flawless, my dear. And here are the six shades. Now you will notice that the pans are smaller. So the total amount of product in this palette is going to weigh in at 6.6 .6 grams. If you go to one of her older six pan palettes, this has 12 grams of product, but it's almost half the amount of product. However, I'm not upset because this is the Italian formula and hopefully it performs like the Italian formula because in that case, I'm perfectly happy with foregoing a little bit of product to ensure a phenomenal formulation. And we have a few new formulations that have never appeared in a six pan before. We have a Blitz Astro formulation and then we have these two kind of baked gelée formulations, which correct me if I'm wrong, but have we seen a formula like this in eyeshadows from Pat McGrath? I don't think that we have. So the fact that we at least have a Blitz Astro and what seems to be a new formulation from Pat McGrath really excites me about this. In my personal opinion, just from my experience with Pat McGrath, I think 
it's okay for the price for it to have less product just because of where it's sourced from and the formulations that you get. So this palette itself is going to cost $65, quite, quite pricey. And then you, I showed you this already, but you'll see this is going to be Miss Whistledown right here. Is that her name? Might have gotten that wrong. And then we have the bees as well. So formulations in here, you are getting one classic matte shade, two shimmer metallics, two of this baked shimmer formulation, and then a blitz astral formulation. All of these are brand new shades. They do not already exist in her line. And if you do go on the website, there is a feature where it's called like the anatomy of the palette and it has like different ways that they would suggest to use this palette so like they have structure builders which they recommend at least three dimensional accents such as divinity bold and jewel tones regency blue and then they highlight the highlight shade so i think that's kind of a neat feature on the website as well let's get to swatching so we'll swatch the top row first we have Iconic Ingenue, Art of the Swoon, and Regency Blue. Here's what they look like on my fingers. So this is the true shimmer shade here. It kind of has almost like a pinky champagne turn to it. Very, very beautiful. Then we have that baked formula. So she actually said that this could be used as a face palette as well. I could see you using this shade as a highlight and this shade as a blush. And this would be pretty because it has that baked formulation. And then let's get into the Blitz Astral shade. So this one doesn't have too much of a pigmented base from what I can see. I think you'll get the most out of this if you use like a glitter glue, but we'll play around with that today. But it looks really, really beautiful. And again, I'm just excited we have this formula <laughs> in a six pan. Next, we're going to swatch the bottom row. This shade feels in incredible okay let's try it out so we'll start off with the matte shade this is blending out beautifully on the hand no patchiness whatsoever now duchess divinity oh my gosh this is one of those shades that's going to travel a mile down your arm so extremely pigmented and metallic very impressed with that and then love match it's a little deeper then Art of the Swoon right here, but it's that same formulation. I'm excited to play around with that. So again, here are the six swatches from the palette right here. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. If I was not a Bridgerton fan and I didn't have a YouTube channel, I probably would not have picked this palette up. There is a repetition of shades that already exist in her line. Honestly, I was a little disappointed to see such a pink-based palette. And as a fan of the show, I can tell you that this palette did not need to be so pink. So this show, Bridgerton, is based on a the Bridgerton family and they always wore blue. Blue is the family color basically. I think to really embody the true Bridgerton vibes of this show, I would have loved to have seen a navy, not only because I think it would complement the show, but it would complement the palette as well. To create more versatility in the looks, I would have gotten rid of one of these for a navy shade and I think a yellow would have been really, really neat for the Featheringtons, which is another family in the show, and maybe like a green shade. The show, if you watch it, it's so colorful. It's not just pink with a pop of blue. There's so much more color that the show has to give. So I feel like as a fan of the show, I would have loved to see those colors added in, as well as I think it would have created more of a fun and versatile palette as well. So this, I'm not exactly partial to the color story. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Going to create gorgeous, gorgeous looks, but it's not the direction I would have gone. Anyways, I'm going to do this eye and then I will be back and we will do the other eye together. So I was experimenting a bit with this eye, particularly the Blitz Astral shade. This isn't going to be the final look. I'm going to do something a little bit more fancy on this eye, but again, I just had to test a few different ways to apply the shade. Let's get into it. So we're going to start off with Iconic Ingenue right here. And this shade for a more everyday look would be absolutely gorgeous all over the lid. But just for today, we're going to start this off for the highlight and you can see this is such a pretty kind of pearly shade. I think it's great that this shade is in the palette though not necessary. I probably would have replaced this shade if I had to but it does serve a purpose in this palette. You can see it really did highlight 
this area. Absolutely gorgeous. E7 V34, we're going into Art of the Swoon. So this is the two of the lighter baked gelée formulations. So this works exactly as a gelée kind of eyeshadow. It's quite soft and you can build it up. It's very beginner friendly. So if you aren't a master of blending eyeshadows. This is going to be really easy for you to use. There is no powder fallout on the face or anything. And it just gives a pretty haze all over the eyelid. You might find if you have more mature eyelids that this is flattering because it's not going to dry the eyelids out. I'm also going to put this on the inner corner of my lower lash and I think this formula is very pretty and I also think it's quite fitting to be a blush. So I think a lot of you guys are going to like this shade. Again, Sick of pink here, but it's pretty. Okay, next we're going into Love Match. I'm using this ancient MAC brush, and I just wanted to show you no fallout here. Between the two shades, I just used the two pink shades. I really find that we did not need both of these in the palette. For a six pan palette, you didn't need both. Now you can see the difference here. That this Love Match shade is definitely deeper. It's very, very beautiful, but I almost would have liked these two shades to be mixed together and have that be the only pink shade in this palette honestly i like this formulation but we didn't need both but anyways i'm going to blend this out because i want it to blend out into the blush and i'm gonna blend it out a little bit lower i didn't do it low enough on this eye but i want it to kind of blend out into the blush i'm gonna do a very cheeky look but again you can see this was super easy to blend it's not going to give you a ton of depth though so where we're going to get the depth from is going to be this shade right here, Plum Regalia, which is absolutely stunning, you guys. There's something about the tones of this that really perfectly deepen up the pinky tones. This color was obviously made to complement the pink tones in here because it adds a plum element. It kind of mutes the look down a little bit. So I'm circling this in the outer corner and then I'm going to blend it inward. And this shade packs a lot of pigment. It's the great traditional Pat McGrath Labs matte formulation. And it's a great finisher to those baked gelée formulations, honestly. This shade is definitely Definitely one that I love in this palette and that would have to stay because it's great. And then whatever's left on your brush, please bring it forward. I didn't do it too much on this eye, but this is what we want. Just like that, this is kind of the base shade of the look. Taking a pointer brush, we're gonna use Duchess Divinity. I think this one might be my favorite color in this palette. I wish I could give it a bigger stage here, but I only have so much room on my eyes. I'm focusing this down here, but if you put this all over the lid, forget the Blitz Astral shade, you would have a killer look. And I'm also just gonna put it on the center of the lid, keeping it kind of low, but I just want you guys to see how this would look. Again, if I wasn't testing this palette out, I would put this all over the eyelid and it would be such a pretty look, but really phenomenal formulation here with that. So next we're gonna go into the Blitz Astro shade and I just wanted to show you what it looked like applied dry to the eyelid. You can see it's definitely about the bluish glitters when the light hits, but I wanted to do something a little bit more intense and I'll go in and fix this eye later. Just so you can see how it looks applied alone. I didn't have a color underneath. I think it also is going to layer really beautifully over the matte shade. So let me show you. Let's play. My arms are stained. Ignore that. But here's what it looks like on its own. I'm going to put down that plum matte shade and then we're going to put the blitz shade over top. So you can do something like that. That looks really, really neat. It kind of brings out the purple tones of the blue. So if you blended the matte all over the eyelid and then popped the blue on top, that would be awesome. I'm also going to show you what it looks like over the intensified artistry wand. All right, I'll turn the lights down a little bit for you. So this is like a mixing medium slash glitter glue. I'm going to put this over top. So it's going to intensify the blue, as you can see, and the glow here. So definitely utilize the ability to layer with that shade. So again, just to get a look, I'm going to actually create a very slight cut crease. 
just like this. So I want to focus the concealer along the top edge and then I'm also putting it in my inner corner. But I don't wanna cover the middle shade on my eyelid too much. Get a clean base for the blue to run up higher over that lid shade. Next, let's take some of the artistry wand. Just pop it right over top. I'm gonna start off with my finger in the blitz shade. Just press it where I can. You can see it's instantly bluer than just applied on the dry eyelid. Use some VO9. I'm going to kind of trace the cut crease. We want that to run over the eyelid and you can see it's instantly more blue. And if you don't have the intensifies wand, just use a glitter glue. NYX has a great one that's affordable. I really like Too Faced glitter glue. You see how I have the blue carrying over the whole look? Then I'm also, this is just dry, but we wanna carry the blue down here just to complete the eye look, finish it off. How pretty is that? Okay, I'm going to do up this eye to match this eye and we'll move on to the cheeks. Okay, let's move on to the blush palette. Same packaging as the eyeshadow palette, but obviously just a little bit smaller. So this is going to be $52. It is also made in Italy and has an 18 month shelf life. When you get it out of the box, it pretty much matches the exact packaging of the eyeshadow palette and here's the back if you need to see anything. If you don't know, each of these pans are smaller than the full size pan of blushes, but I just think it's a great deal to try out this blush formulation. So this is the second time Pat McGrath has come out with a trio. She first came out with it in her holiday collection, and I just think it's a great deal, especially to try out her blush formulation, which is superb. So you have two blushes in here and a highlight. The blushes are all already existing, in her line, but I I do believe Venus Nectar is new. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I don't have that one in my collection, so at the very least, it's new to me. So let me swatch the blushes for you. So we have Cherish, which is a little brighter, Nymphette, which is a beautiful wearable blush color. It's kind of like a pinky golden shade, and then we have Venus Nectar. This... So again, Cherish, Nymphette, and then Venus Nectar. This highlight looks like it could be a bit too deep for me. Maybe this is the shade that does already exist. I just don't have it because it was too deep for me because I believe she came out with this shade before. I do have the individuals, so let's just see if they're the same. So here is Nymphette. Single Nymphette is right here, and then here's the Trio Nymphette. This almost looks a little bit more pink. And it looks like there's a little bit more to gold running through the one in the trio, but they're close enough. I mean, I don't think you'd be able to tell on the cheek. And then let me pull out my individual Cherish. Looks really bright on its own. So this is the individual Cherish and then the trio in Cherish. And those look pretty much exactly the same. So they definitely don't look like different shades. I would say so. That's good, we don't want them to look different. So I'm starting off with a Trish McAvoy brush and we're gonna go into Nymphette. And I want this to be the apple color right here. Just focusing it right on the apples of my cheek. Now this is a very pinky blush trio, so if you don't like pink blushes, this one won't be for you, but I must say give pink blushes a try, okay? I love a good pink blush. And you can see there's a very subtle golden sheen with this Nymphette color, but the Pat McGrath blushes are phenomenal. They're going to last all day on your cheek, and I do have the lights down low so you can really see the blush color, but it actually isn't quite as intense as you think it is in real life. I just want to make sure you guys see the color. Okay, we're gonna go into Cherish. This is a brighter shade. So I'm using a lighter brush, and I'm gonna blend it into the eyeshadow that we blended out earlier. So this one is a little bit deeper, but since I'm using more of a fluffy brush, it still is extremely workable. So just blend that up just like this. I know it looks very, very pink. It will come together in the end, I promise. So just blend that, and the highlight is going to kind of tone down the look 
believe it or not. Okay, I'm only going to put the highlights on one of my cheeks because we have the other highlights to talk about. So again, this is Venus Nectar, which is like a pinky highlight. Let's see how it looks on my light medium skin tone. Oh, there is a pretty glow to it. It's a beautiful formula. I love this highlight formula from Pat McGrath. It's not the first time she's done this formula. It's one of my favorites from her for sure. Oh, and that's really pretty. It's very, very shiny. It looks very smooth on the skin. It is just barely working on my complexion. I think if you are very fair, this highlight might be a little bit too deep on you, but on my light medium skin tone, I'm definitely able to make it work. If it was like a quarter shade lighter, it would just be just fine, but it is a wee bit too dark on my complexion, but really not bad at all. Really, really pretty, very happy with this. I would not have bought this if I wasn't a fan of Bridgerton though, because I do have two of the blushes that already exist in this collection, but I wanted to have this packaging. If you like pink blushes, I think you will really enjoy this, but it's not a necessity in this collection, I would say. In general, I don't think this collection is a necessity, but very, very pretty. Love how it blended in perfectly with the eyeshadow. Definitely complements the tones of the eyeshadows. So she chose the perfect shades. If you ask me, if she wasn't going to choose new shades, I'm happy she chose these shades because it really blends into the eyeshadow palette beautifully. It is time to layer a bit. So I picked up both of the highlights. These are the Skin Fetish Sublime Skin Highlighters. Again, if you want to take a closer look at the packaging here, this is made in Italy and has an 18 month shelf life. Now the component itself is going to look like this. It's the exact same packaging as the blush, but you can see in this, I will take off for you. I don't really love this. I wish we would have done something a little bit more fancy here, but it's fine, whatever. And then you open it up and there is a little cherub in here. Very, very detailed, absolutely gorgeous. You guys told me it was called a cherub because I was calling it a flying naked angel baby. So happy there's a term for that. So as you can see, this one is, oh my gosh, the crazy one. If I wasn't such a fan of Pat McGrath, would not have picked this up, but this is the Extreme Gold 002. And then we also have Incandescent Gold 002. So this is the Sparkling Platinum Gold that I'm going to be using on my cheek. So we did have a highlight come out like this for the holidays. Let me show you. This packaging is much better if you ask me, but it's kind of similar in that like, you can see same style of embossing. Huh, interesting. This has 8.5 grams of product and this says 10.5 grams. So you got a little bit more, which is awesome. Now, something to note, you guys, these are pricey. They are $60 each. I would never encourage you guys to spend $60 on a highlight. Never, ever, ever. These are definitely collector's items, but let's take a look at the first one, which is Incandescent Gold. This is the one I'm going to be playing around with the most. Absolutely beautiful detail here. So this is a sparkling platinum gold. I don't know where to touch. Let's touch right here on this side. Okay, so here is how it looks on my finger. Ooh, that looks beautiful. <gasps> wow. Okay, I think I'm going to absolutely love this. This one for deep skin tones. Oh my goodness. So here's how it looks on my finger. For me, it's going to like go all over the eyelid. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work in any capacity on my face. So I'm just not, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll put a little bit on, but yeah, this is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Deeper skin tone's great, and I know a lot of you guys said it reminded you a lot of Trophy Wife from Fenty, and I've been trying to declutter this. It's been in my declutter bin for my friends to pick out, and none of them have taken this, so I was digging in that bin. So let me show you what they look like next to each other. So luckily it worked out. They look very similar. Let's see. Here's the Fenty Trophy Wife. Pat McGrath. It's a little bit more of a deeper gold, a little bit more yellow, and it has way more pigmentation. And this looks terrible on me as a highlight. I'll show you, because there's always a comment like, but we wanted to see it on your face. So let me get my highlight brush out. I'm gonna put it on this cheek. So I mixed it in with another highlight. It's not gonna be on its own. It, it's not flattering, you guys. It's really not. It's making me look like I have jaundice. You can get away with mixing it. Like maybe if you mix these two when you're in my skin tone, but this is not for people with my skin tone. At least applying it in this way. 
you can totally apply this like to the eyelid just for a little extra something or something right there like that actually looks really pretty there i mean like just like that you know i mean you can do a lot more with it but i just wanted to show you that you can put this all over the eyelid it's really pretty but this is not my main focus if you have a rich complexion oh my gosh i mean i'm not going to tell you to set spend 60 dollars on this but this formulation for pat mcgrath is phenomenal and you would love it it would look spectacular on you now let's go to the one that is more suited towards me i'm gonna put it on top of the gold because i actually didn't want my eye look to be so gold try and tone that down a little bit just a little bit <laughs> i'm gonna show you what it looks like on its own but on the pemagrath website she actually recommends layering with her skin fetish balm duo so we'll try that as well but let's just see how it looks on its own so if you are a light medium complexion this is definitely the one you want to go to this is a beautiful formula i love how this looks now it's not as smooth as the highlight in the blush trio i like the highlight in the blush trios formulation a little better uh, because there's very small glitter particles which can emphasize texture a little bit but it is a highlight so i'm not personally offended by that i think it's really pretty i think it flatters the tones in the eyeshadow as well i'm not mad at it i'm actually gonna put some right in the inner corner as well this is so pretty i love this and i want to get the yellow out of the look so we're gonna put it on top i don't like that okay we're gonna use i think the balm side of the highlight balm duo i'm gonna put it right on top this is from pat mcgrath you want to do this before you apply the powder but i wanted to show you both and this is going to really intensify it yeah it made it a little bit more intense personally i prefer it without the balm duo but they do layer pretty good on top of one another it is more intense that way but I didn't really need it to do that personally. Okay, anyways, those are the products. Let me get myself together and I will be back to give you my final thoughts. So with everything pulled together, here is the final look. My gosh, I absolutely love it. I think it's so, so pretty. So here are my final thoughts overall about this collection. As a Bridgerton fan, super excited about this, super in love with the packaging. I think it's great. But let's take a step back. Let's say I'm not a Bridgerton fan. Is anything in this collection a must have? Let's start off with the eyeshadow palette. I think it's very pretty. I think the quality is really great. And what I'm really excited most about this is the formulations that you're getting. And honestly, you can get a really pretty look with this. But if you have a lot of Pat McGrath palettes, I don't think you need this because it is so pink based. It really isn't something crazy unique within her collection. Now, if you love the Italian formula, or maybe you don't want to buy a Mothership palette, but want to try the Italian formula, this is a way to go this palette isn't $125 so maybe this actually might be a great fit for you but I would have changed the color story a bit honestly get rid of this color and make it a navy and I think it would have been a whole new palette so that's my thoughts on that I don't think it's a must-have but the quality is spectacular so make your decision based on that the blush palette if you don't like pink cheeks don't get this <laughs> i don't recommend it but if you like pink cheeks and if you've been wanting to try the pat mcgrath formula this is a great way to get two blushes in her permanent line and a highlight that i believe is also in her permanent line i really like this i think it's great i love pink blushes i'm excited that i ended up picking this up despite even having the full size blushes already but only if you like pink blushes and if you've been interested in trying the Pat McGrath formula. Now the highlights. These, if you ask me, are more collector's edition style products. I don't think you need these, but you definitely don't need both of these. If you have a rich complexion, honestly, I'm kind of, I just want to see this on a rich complexion. I think this is going to be gorgeous, but again, definitely a collector's item, not something that you need to have. I would never encourage you to spend $60 on a highlight, and I don't think this formula is worth $60, but I mean, as a fan of Pat McGrath and Bridgerton, it was a collector's item. That's what I bought knowing. And this is also really gorgeous. Honestly, I like both of these on the eyelids. But these, I say, are probably the things that you need the least from this collection because they're $60 of one color. But other than that, I mean, I really like this collection. I think the quality in this collection is really good. I had a lot of fun creating this look today. So it's up to you. But anyways, I'm excited about it. I really like it. So that's all I have for today. Today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know, did I encourage you to pick this collection up or did I discourage you from picking it up? What are your thoughts on this collection? I would love to know. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel already, make sure you do that. 
And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.